All right, welcome. We are actually at the final proposal, which is so crazy. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just screen sharing our textbook. And then what I've also done, and I will post this for you, is I've just chosen um, one of my students from the past and I've posted his paper, but I've kind of very intensely graded it and just commented on it in Google Docs. Um, so you will sort of see how the paper looks a little different. So I just very quickly want to go over the parts of the paper. Um, a couple of things are new, but a lot of what you're doing is the same and you're sort of extending your research, revising your midterm and really getting it to a point where it's polished and you're proud of submitting it. Um, a couple of new things. You'll see that page one ends up turning into a cover letter for your patron. We'll go over what needs to be included there, but it is just one page in length. Um, you'll see that page two, and these all count towards your page limit, uh, would be a title page. So this is a two-part title. Um, it's very specific, and I really like that about it. Alex also included an image, and then he has these required sections here. Uh, page three is an abstract. This is an interesting section. It's very easy to write. It's very brief. Um, it's generally speaking one to two paragraphs in length, and it's written from a disinterested, non-persuasive perspective. And it's really just trying to recap the problem, paradigm, and plan portion of your proposal. Um, sometimes data points are used, but the purpose is so that a secretary would be able to file it or put it on the proper person's desk. Um, going on, you have your table of contents. You also have your table of figures. Um, and then you start with your intro, and this is where it's very similar to your midterm. Um, you'll see everything prior to this kind of has its own page, and it's okay if there's blank space. Um, but from your intro down, you will see that a lot of it is, um, it just kind of bleeds into each other. So yes, it starts on a fresh page. Here's that intro. You'll see that everything that's highlighted in this purplish color would count as a statistic. Um, remember, you really are aiming to have around 10% of your paper cited or less. Um, there's also a new thing here. We have figures that are included. You need at least three. Um, so each figure is labeled properly. We have figure one, wheat production, and then we have that source that's parenthetically cited. We're still here defining the problem and establishing the population. There are more figures. You'll see that he has additional subtitles. Um, and then he zooms in on his population and offers a ton of data there. So you will see that his problem section is just over four pages in length. And remember, that's really quantifying the problem and really talking about his population. Uh, then he goes into his literature review. This is the new title that we use for your paradigm section. So this is where initially in your midterm you were writing about models of success and pieces of theory. Same thing. It's just that now everyone titles it lit review. And then if you had subtitles, that's fine. So he titles his parts of the puzzle. He gives a small intro and then he goes into each of his models. So the binder project is one of his models. He has the Trenton Area Soup Kitchen as another model. He has the New Jersey Anti-Hunger Coalition as a third model. And then you'll see that he has um, a fourth component to his paradigm, and it's a piece of theory. And he goes over techno-ecology. Um, and then you'll see that he transitions into his plan. He has subsections for his plan. Um, he ends up offering an intro and then going into different pillars. That's fine. Um, you do not have to have pillars. You might have step one, part one, part two. Um, however you want to do it is fine, but you'll see that dividing it into subcategories is important. He goes over his budget. It is mandatory now that your budget goes in accountants columns. Um, it's basically like in, um, including a table into your paper. Um, and then you'll see he divides his to starting costs and yearly costs. Some of you might only have one table. Some of you might have two or three, depending on what's right for your actual plan. And then he closes with his discussion section, which is his call to action. Um, and remember, you don't need to sign your name because that's all done in your cover letter. Um, and you'll see that this paper is um, 15 pages in length. Remember, in the beginning, he does use Roman numeral numbers, so it is a total of 15. And then he has his references pages. And uh, there's several pages of sources. They're all alphabetized, double-spaced. 
the indentations are correct. So just make sure that your references page is proper. Um, whatever your final source count is, you need at least 10 sources. You might have more. Alex has a lot more. Um, you want to make sure that half of them are scholarly. So I'm just going to stop recording there and then I'm going to go into our chapter in just a moment. And this is sort of just a brief lecture on directions for all of those things. Um, so we will do that in just a moment.